Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation 4, homebrew news, and much, much more. So today's video is a little bit different than some of my previous videos where they're just tutorials only. In this video, I want to shed a lot on some of at least the open source libraries that Sony is using in the PlayStation 5. And there's a couple of reasons why this is important to talk about. Let's go ahead and let's switch over to the PC and check this out. So yesterday I posted this tweet and it said that Sony lists the open source software libraries that are used in the PlayStation 5. And I provided this link right here. So they only listed about five different projects. And then this other one here with FFmpeg, so inside of this tweet, I obviously tagged a couple of great resources here and control execute wrote back and he said, hey, there's a lot more than that, which you can see in the PS5 itself. It basically should be in a menu somewhere. So then I replied back saying, basically, I wonder how much of the PS4 open source software was used in the PS5. This link, on the other hand, feels very complete as it lists a large number of projects that's being used. But again, not very much, at least that's publicly disclosed for the PlayStation 5. And so Control Execute provided this YouTube video, which is simply this one right here. And what it states here is that there are 53 more pages although 51 of them are for different versions of Babel. So knowing now that there is actually 56 pages, at least on a PS5 4.03, I thought now would may be a great time to go ahead and to release a new video that lists all of the open source software license on the device itself. Again, I found the same similar thing that DJS found was, was that many of the pages were just referring to different versions of Babel, which is just simply a JavaScript compiler that's been used for many years. And so how could the homebrew community potentially use this? Well, you can see that right here is the license for set immediate. And if we go over to the set immediate GitHub, and again, this is just one sample of many, many, many open source samples, we could come in here and we could explore and we could see what that code is actually doing because these are open source software. And again, for these projects that are listed, Sony has to disclose what the projects are simply because these are typically under a license, which could be something such as MIT. So if we go to the MIT license, we can see here that a short and simple permissive license with conditions only requiring preserving the copyright and license noticed, license worked modifications and larger work may be distributed under different terms and without source code. So in short, the condition is, is that whoever uses this software does need to contain a license and copyright notice. And so looking back at this project right here, we can see that there are multiple issues. A lot of these go back to maybe even 2018 and earlier. And then there's also a couple of different pull requests where there were certain things that, that needs to be fixed. There's always a possibility with one of these open source projects that they introduce some sort of bug or way to run arbitrary code that Sony hasn't patched yet. And so the same can be said for this other example, and that is this one right here, which is to Camel Case. So this is by Ian Storm Taylor. And if we go over here to the GitHub page, you can see basically what this does is convert a string to a camel case. And again, if we scroll down into this project, you will see that this is also under the MIT license, which means that Sony has to disclose it. But again, we do have the full source code to this application. And if we know that they use this, and especially on a certain version, 
Well, then if there was some sort of exploits that others have found, we can potentially use those in order to gain access on a PlayStation 5. So with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the PlayStation 5. And what we're going to do there is we're just going to go through the open source software that was used on pages 1 through 7. Again, pages 8 through 56 are more along the lines of just different versions of Babel that was used. And I understand that this video isn't for everyone but don't worry, I have another tutorial series that's going to be coming out very soon on more PS4 goodness. All right, to the video.
And finally, thank you so very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Michael out!